preparation, cooling, toasting, changes some of the blood sugar effects on our system. Trust me, out of all the foods, I think the carbohydrate foods <laughs> probably are most, you know, mentally pleasing, not satisfying. Because usually when you eat proteins, satiety, not being hungry anymore, is actually seems to be more accomplished. But when it does come to things that just taste darn good, it always seems to be those darn carbohydrates. And that's why carbohydrates has gotten the rap that has been kind of like negative. But I would tell you right now, you say, Doc, you love fiber and cruciferous vegetables. Yes, those are all carbohydrates. I believe that people don't eat enough fiber. Now, the, now an example of Erin, fiber seems to actually drive her whole digestive tract and even microbial is kind of crazy. Now, is she more the exception to the rule? Absolutely. So how she is doctored, and when I give her guidance and stuff going forward, we've accomplished hormonal balance, weight loss, energy, mental clarity, in, in much different ways after we saw her labs and actually guide her that way. Now, that's why if somebody comes in, my general rule is gonna be, hey man, eat as much fiber as possible. Because I believe young men and women, and actually older men and women, do not eat enough. Um, and that's why, once again, has, now I'm, that's why I speak in general to you guys information, I'm gonna give you that, but then that's why we need to have certain guidance and discussions. That's why we have things on our website. And that's why you have the, the Wellness Way Plus subscription, where you can go a little bit more in detail too. So people say, well Doc, how can I get some of those carbohydrates that I just love? Because I have stories like this, and even happened this past weekend in Atlanta, where women say, Doc, you know something? My friend, she eats a ton, bowls of rice, and she eats bread like crazy, and she still stays this big around. And I just have some rice, some beautiful organic hot rice with chicken breast. It seems like I bloat, and I, and I just see my blood sugar jumps up, and, and you know, I'm like, okay, that can't happen. There are exceptions to the rule, but let's do this. There are some things that we can do, and so I'm gonna answer the question that somebody asked me this past Saturday. Once again, if you guys do interact, send me emails. If you have a question for me, you can email me at pflynn at the pflynn at the and me, Dr. Bryce, Dr. Lucas, and no joke, Dr. Devin, and a bunch of other doctors, because they come in by the ton, um, we're going to try to answer them. If we don't get to them, just understand, we get a ton of Martin, we'll eventually get to them. But the idea is this, this came from a question when I was talking to somebody at Atlanta, so therefore we'd like to hear from you guys because it'll give you good guidance. So here it is. Is there a difference between hot rice and cold rice, hot potatoes and cold potatoes? Well, guess what happens, guys? Yes, there is, okay? There is. Now, if you think about it this way, is the reason why that I like fiber in certain starches is because it does help feed the bacteria that we do have. Because in, in general, I, I watch, I watch um, all videos when people send them to me. Uh, someone's uh, talking about, okay, once again, in the carnivore diet, fiber's not essential. Um, okay, I know what they mean by not being essential, but I look at, uh, okay, listen, from a standpoint of me producing tissue cells and things like that, I agree, uh, we could probably eat carbohydrate, I apologize, proteins and fats, our body can make carbohydrates and do certain things, but here's the point is, but then I look at going, they may not be essential for me on certain things, but the gut microbiome, they kind of need it. So it might be more essential for them, it might be. Now I'm not saying that, once again, that, uh, that our microbials uh, are, don't do well with, uh, with meat and fats and things like that, because once again, Erin's a perfect example. Uh, she does really well with it. But in general, microbials do really good with inulin, do really good with resistant starches, and that's one thing. So if you look at rice, and the reason why, you know, if you had great organic, you know, white rice, all things perfect, okay, and you ate it hot, the glycemic load is larger than when you cool it. And here's some research to talk about it. Influence of resistant starch resulting from cooling of rice on postprandial, which means after meal glycemic in type one diabetics. And just to synopsis this way, I'll put it in yellow, this type of starch is forming in the process of retrogression, okay? During the cooling of starch, amylose molecules and long branch chains of uh, alimopectin form double helices and lose their water binding capacity. Double helices of starch molecules are resistant to amylose hydrolysis. Now, what does it mean? It means because when they cool down, now the major enzyme like 
amylose to break it down doesn't work. So therefore, it doesn't have as much available glucose to bring up blood sugar levels. So is there still you know, glucose that does? Yes, but not as much. So what does it do? It decreases the what? The glycemic load that goes into the system so quickly, plus now being more of a resistant starch, guess what loves it? Our friendly, good, normal form bacteria, which is fantastic. So what it does is if you're going to do rice, make some rice, um, put it in the refrigerator overnight, eat it the next day. Because I'm a doc, I like hot chicken and, and rice. Well, just try to, you know, once again, have, learn to eat the cold rice. That's why sushi seems much better than just having hot rice on, on, with chicken. Now, once again, it's very important because now be, become a resistant starch. That also happens with potatoes. Once again, potatoes by far, and that's why french fries are the most sold thing in the world when it comes to, the, to, to a, a vegetable, it's not really a vegetable. But the idea is this, is once again, potatoes are very satisfying. They do, they bring a lot of pleasure, they bring out, I mean, when I was a kid, who didn't like McDonald's fries? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, man, it was kind of funny. I remember when I was a kid, that all of a sudden you'd get to the bottom and you're like, oh man, there's no more fries. Then all of a sudden, guess what happened? Some of the fries dumped in the bag and there was a couple left over and it was like heaven on earth because the fries, there was three left at the bottom of the thing that was underneath the hamburger. Oh my goodness, you know all, but we all have been there. McDonald's and Brown's for so long. Now, once again, do I encourage people to eat McDonald's fries? I, I think there's better things out there. I'd, I'd rather have somebody make their own fries. We do, it's kind of cool. We make sweet potato fries, we make those. But once again, potatoes are very satisfying. And so, but majority of the time in my household, we like to make potato salad. Because now you can throw all the herbs on top of it, you got vinegar in there. But once again, the potatoes, once again, now cooled and they become more of a resistant starch. So therefore, the microbials in our intestinal tracts kind of love it because they need that resistant starch to not only produce fatty acids, but also produce certain nutrients. Um, I heard somebody, and I, I won't use their name because he kind of got it wrong and I kind of like him. Uh, I like him as an individual, but he talked about, he goes, you know, the only uh, vitamin that your body makes is vitamin D. Well, that's not true. Because once again, some of your bacteria do make B vitamins and other vitamins in the in this intestinal tract. Now, once again, if they want to call that separate from you, that's fine. But the idea is this, our body does make vitamins from having the resistant starches. That's why I do like fiber. That's why I like that, because if you get, the, if you get all the microbials happy and doing well, they do a wonderful job of producing nutrients, not only for, once again, that we need for other parts of our body, because if we produce B vitamins, that's good brain health that way. So, that being said, yes, there's a difference. So please do me a favor. Look at cooling your rice. Look at cooling your potatoes. Then you eat them later because they will help produce a resistant starch. Now, those are two things people love. But what do people love? It's one of the most important sugars that people seem to eat a, that have a little bit more high glycemic effect is breads. Well, I've got a question for you. Is there a way to decrease the glycemic effect in breads? Guess what, guys? Yes. That's what we do at our household, okay? And I've encouraged patients to do this for a long period of time. Here we go. The impact of freezing and toasting on the glycemic response of white bread. Now, it's quite interesting. Guys, here, um, once again, this is just me. I kind of like Sammy's bread. I kind of like a couple other uh, things. Now, do I eat them? No. I would tell you this. I don't eat bread. Okay? Now, why don't I eat it? This is just me. I love crucifying this, but for some reason, if I do it, my GI doesn't like it. It seems like I can literally, if I, honestly, I'm not joking. If I eat a sandwich a day, I guarantee I probably end up with two pounds, even trying to keep calorie restriction down. It just, for some reason, the way my body processes it, it's just a no-no for me. So I have to stay away from it. Otherwise, once again, it, it, it's negative for me. Now, they're on. Daughters, people, I, know, I have no problem with it. But also, I want to keep the glucose spikes down and keep blood sugar a little bit more stable. So I listen, do me a favor. Can you keep it in the freezer and then toast it right away? Ah, doc, I like, I like sandwich. I understand, but we're trying to make sure because if you look at what happens with the metabolic syndrome and blood sugar being too high for too long, let's use some of these strategies that allow us to keep blood sugar lower. So look, let's read it. All three procedures uh, investigate freezing and defrosting, toasting from fresh and toasting following freezing and defrosting favorably altered the glucose response of the breads. This is the first study known to authors to show reduction in glycemic response as a re result of changes in storage conditions and preparation of white bread before consumption. In addition, the study highlighted a uh, need to define the maintained storage conditions of white bread if used as a reference food in termination of the glycemic index for foods. So once again, 
preparation, cooling, toasting, changes some of the blood sugar effects on our system. That's why I like it, okay? Now, so there's just good habits. So if I have people say, Doc, you know, I know you want me to stay as low as sugar possible, but just need a piece of bread. Okay, guess what? Toast it. Doc, I just love my rice. Okay, cool it. You see him? And I cool it. I take it from hot, let it cool down, then eat it after that. Sometimes the next day I think is always the best. Let those starches change. Hey, everyone. For unedited, full-length, unapologetic content, go to my website, drpatrickflynn.com. Hit the subscribe button to join our community for more amazing content like this every day.